What's happening guys? So first things first, I want to apologize. I'm sure the sound quality is probably not going to be the best on this between my car running, the AC going and everything. It's probably got some background noise, but I'm in Florida and it's hot and I don't want to sweat while I do this. So you're going to have to deal. But I wanted to talk about the meat and kind of some of the reflections and my thoughts on it. And I got to say, I'm very happy I decided to wait about a week after the meat to actually shoot this video versus doing it right afterwards. Because if I had done it right after the meat, it would have been a very different video. It would have had a much different tone and it just wouldn't have been very pretty. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not happy with my performance. I was extremely upset with how poorly I performed on this day. And now that I've had a little time to reflect, I have a little different perspective on it. Now, I'm still not happy. I still feel like I'm a heck of a lot stronger than what my numbers actually showed. But there were some learning lessons, there were some silver linings, and there were some things to take away from it, and some good and some bad things that happened during it. So that's kind of what I want to cover over this video. But before I do that, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to DeNovo Nutrition. These guys are absolutely amazing. You know, I got a message from Ryan Doris before the meet saying, hey, your coach Jake is going to be in the meet. He's actually performing, and we, we want him to concentrate on his meet. So... Uh, ben Escrow and myself are going to help handle you through the meet and kind of keep things going for you and, and all that stuff. And I'm just like, wow, like, okay, you know, I love Jake. I, I, he's a tremendous coach, but it's not exactly a downgrade to go from Jake to Ryan Doris and, and Ben Escrow. So Ben pretty much did all the handling for me and he did a fantastic job, especially considering he really doesn't know me. He, he doesn't work with me. He doesn't train with me. And he was kind of going into this blind, not knowing a lot. And he handled things very well for me. And, and I put all my trust in him regardless. And, and he did a good job. Despite my performance, it was not Ben's fault by any means. In fact, he tried to he tried to make the most of what was obviously not going to be a good day for me. And, and I really appreciate it. And Ryan himself was absolutely amazing. I cannot say enough good things about Ryan. You know, he kept my head on straight. He when, when things weren't going right, he kept me focused. He gave me a lot of good perspective. He gave me a lot of good things to think about. I learned a lot from him just being there and I just had a lot of really good conversations with him and he was a godsend for me that day. So you know, I don't know if you're watching this, Ryan, but if you are, thank you very, very much. And also, of course, huge shout out to everybody who came out to support me and watch me. I really do appreciate it more than you'll ever know. So thank you guys so much. Now, as for the meet itself, it just did not start out very well. And, and it kind of set the tone. And, and squats have a tendency to do that with meets. If you perform really bad on squats, it's it's there's a good chance that's going to set the tone for the rest of the meet. But what happened was I just, I, I didn't have time to warm up in time. And it's my fault, nobody else's, but there was a, a handful of us in the actual 83 kilogram class with the Noma Nutrition. We were all kind of together and we were all warming up, thinking we had plenty of time before we were gonna get ready for squats. And as we were just getting into warm ups, all of a sudden somebody comes like running up saying, you guys, you're almost up. Like, it's time to go. You gotta, you gotta get going and get this done. So I don't know what happened. I don't know where the confusion was, but it's my fault. It's my responsibility and nobody else's to make sure that you're warmed up on time and ready to go. And I wasn't paying attention and I paid the price for it. So, I mean, I was sitting there. I think I was just doing like 200 pounds or something, just really light, just getting, getting warmed up. And all of a sudden, I've, I've got like five minutes before my first attempt. So I did a single at 360 and then a single at 430 and then I had to do my opener at 460 and that felt like crap. It was so heavy because of this. Now, I think it would have been heavy anyway because I just didn't feel like I had it that day, but obviously not being able to warm up it in time does not help. And I also had in the back of my mind this whole squat depth thing. I knew that USAPL was being really picky with squats and I knew that mine was my, my normal squats were going to be borderline, so I was going to have to sink them. So that first attempt, that's what I did. I absolutely buried it, but I had, I had to change everything to do that. And I got on my toes. I got out. I got the weight out in front of me, and it just was sloppy. I got it done. I hit depth. I got three white lights, but it felt like crap. It was heavy, and it just further played with my my mind at that point. So I was supposed to go to 485 from there, but we decided to go with 475 since it felt so crappy. And I hit that one, I did get one red light for depth on that. And then I went into my third attempt, which was supposed to be 515 if things were going well. And we went to 485, which was supposed to be my second attempt. And it was a grinder. I mean, an absolute grinder. It was tough. So I just did not have it. And I got called for depth on, on both sides. So it didn't count. 
looking back at the video, I really feel like I hit depth, but you know what? I'm not even mad about it. It, I knew this could be an issue. It's, it's why I've been freaking out about depth for so long. So that's really gonna be the focus moving forward is making sure I'm burying every single rep. And I'm, in order to do this, I'm gonna have to drop the weight. It's gonna be very hard on my ego, but I, I gotta do what I gotta do. And it's like adapt or die, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna lighten the load. I'm gonna bury every single rep and I'm just gonna make sure that that's how I train from now on and not leave any of this borderline crap because that, that played with me all week. All week leading up to that meet, I was freaked out about depth and literally worried about bombing out because I couldn't hit depth. So I can't let that happen anymore. That's That was the number one learning lesson from this. Besides obviously making sure you're warmed up on time, I gotta make sure I'm burying all my squats and training every single time and it's gonna only gonna make me a better lifter. So that's gonna be the focus moving forward with squats. Now, on the bench, bench didn't feel that great either. No, the first attempt went fine. We went on to my normal second attempt, which was 314, which actually ties a meat PR. And I'm at weight class below, obviously. And I hit that, but it didn't feel great. On video, it looks like it went fine. It looks like it was clean and it looked like I had a lot more in me and that's what everybody said. But I got up after that second attempt and looked at Ben and said, that didn't feel very good. So he only went up two and a half kilograms because he's a really smart coach. And we tried to hit that for a PR and it just wasn't there. It, I got it about halfway up and I just couldn't lock it out. I don't know why. Normally I can, I can lock that out. If I get there and I get stuck, I can usually lock it, but I couldn't. I don't know why. I don't feel like I misgrooved. I, my, my elbows might have flared a little bit, but it just it just didn't happen. It wasn't there that day. And and my strength just wasn't there in general. All, all day, my strength was not there. Like it just, I don't know why. I don't know what happened. I don't know what I did wrong, but lifts that I was hitting in training for conservative maxes while fatigued were lifts I could not do at this meet. Totally recovered after a taper. So I, I don't know what happened there, but from there, went on the deadlifts, and right from the get-go, even in warm-ups, they felt like crap. Something felt totally off. I don't know what I was doing, but it was just a complete cluster. I think I was just psyched out at this point. You know, I felt like I was, I was leaning forward again. I, I just, it was ugly. And, you know, I got the first attempt out of the way, got that done, and it felt fine. So we went into my normal second attempt, which was 501, which is the exact same weight that I've done in every single meet for a final attempt. I hit it, my calf cramped up, which what's that about? Who gets a calf cramp on deadlifts? I, that's just, I don't know. I probably just shows you how inefficient I am at moving the weight. And uh, that was the other learning lesson because I just, I was not hydrated. I know I wasn't. I, I just was not hydrated. That was really stupid. After my weigh-ins, I went and I, I hydrated great. You know, I got a bunch of Gatorade in ton of water, just chugged it and made sure I got nice and hydrated, but then I didn't really drink much the rest of the meat. And usually I'm just guzzling water all meat long, going to the bathroom like every five minutes because I have to, I have so much water in me that I'm just constantly going. And I didn't do that this time. I don't know why, I just wasn't thinking about it. And I didn't hydrate, hydrate myself properly and I paid the price. I had these nasty calf cramps during deadlifts. And now that third attempt, even walking up to the bar, it was cramping up. I got set up. It was like just sitting there twitching before I even grabbed the weight. It was like, here we go. Like I just knew it was going to be a disaster. Tried to go for it anyway and got it about halfway up. And it felt like somebody stabbed a freaking knife into my leg. And I just dropped it and just said it wasn't my day. It, re it really wasn't my day. But you know what, it's okay, it's okay. I mean, I learned a lot of valuable lessons from this meet. And even though I fell about, what about 70, 80 pounds short of what I was hoping to do on that day, I still finished second. Like, I still medal, I got my first medal. And I, I had to remind myself that I dropped this weight to be more competitive. And initially I was so pissed off that I performed so poorly. I just felt like the medal meant nothing, like it was stupid and that you know, I should be as like ashamed of my performance, but then I, I kind of thought about it. I'm like, you know what? This is why I, I dropped a weight class. Like I, I performed like crap, still finished second and could have done way better. Now, granted it's a local meet and it's not like, you know, you, you never know who's gonna show up to a local meet and it's not like I was going against all the greatest lifters in the, in the country or anything, but it's the first time I've ever been competitive at a meet and that's what I wanted. So I got what I wanted. I wanted to be more competitive. I am more competitive. Obviously, I'd like to perform better, but I have to remember th that, you know what? I performed like crap. I was still competitive, and that can only bode really well for my future.
the other thing I kind of stopped and thought about was like, okay, I got second, but I was I was not happy about it. I didn't feel like I deserved it. I didn't. I wasn't proud of that medal. But then when I stopped and thought, even if I had gone nine for nine, I still would have finished second. Jake still would have beat me. Jake's my coach, and he came in first, and 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 that's awesome. I'm proud of him. He did a fantastic job, and I mean, he killed everything, and he hit a lot in the tank too. Like he just freaking killed it and and he's amazing and he's a great coach and he's a great lifter and it's kind of fun to watch and and I'm looking forward to lifting with him again in nationals but anyway side rant there uh even if I had gone nine for nine I still would have finished second but I would have been really proud of it I would have been like this medal means a lot to me I would have been so proud of that medal but then I wasn't because I didn't perform well even though I got the exact same place like it's just kind of crazy and it was kind of backwards but you know in the moment it just kind of is what it is, but I am more proud of it now. I am happy about it. I I wish I would have performed better. I know I can perform better. I know I'm a lot, lot stronger than what my total showed. But even with my poor total, which was roughly about the same as my meat that I did last time at that 93 kilogram, even with that same total, my Wilkes is still like 20 some points higher. <laughs> you know, so the, it's not like I didn't improve. And I, and I know there's a lot more in there. Like, I, I just know that I'm so much stronger than that meet. I, I did it in, in training. A week before the meet. A week and a half before the meet. In conservative maxing, I did better on all my lifts than I did in that meet. All of them. <laughs> but it is what it is, man. Like, sometimes I feel like when things go wrong like this, that only makes you better. And it definitely made me hungrier. Like, I just cannot wait to go do another meet now and, and just prove to everybody else and more importantly myself that this meet was a fluke, that I'm gonna do way better, that I'm a lot stronger. I'm gonna start getting more calories in my life again. I had been in a deficit for so long leading into that meet. And now I can start getting those calories in it and just get better. Like, I'm hungry. I just, I just, I, I cannot wait to go smash it at nationals in October. Unfortunately, I do have that eye surgery in the beginning of May, and that's going to put me out of training for at least a month, so it's going to be kind of like comeback season leading into the Nationals, but I still feel like even with that, I'm still going to perform better, I'm still going to have better numbers, and I'm, I'm going to go into Nationals, and I'm going to go 9 for 9, and I'm going to be proud of my performance, and, and I can probably thank this per- poor performance for why I'm going to do better in the future. You know, if you do great every single time, you don't learn anything, and then eventually it, it'll catch up with you, so... You grow from your failures, and and that's that's what's happening here. So, anyway, that was kind of long. I apologize for that, but I just want to talk about everything. If you stuck around this whole time, you were amazing, and I love you, and thank you so much for watching, like you always do. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video.